to my channel. Today's look is going to be using purples. A lot of you guys are requesting color. You want to see color. And I totally hear you. I understand. It's spring to summer. Wait, is it? No, it's not even spring yet. I, I'm so... I, don't, I can't even believe it's summer. I keep saying it's spring and it's not. So it is summer and a lot of you guys are requesting color. And I don't care what time of year it is. Any time of the year is good for a smoky eye. But I think this is a good smoky eye for the summer because it's not like pitch black. It's not super dark. And it's more of like a halo smoky eye. Or sorry, it is. There's a lot of, you know, light through the center and dark through the inner and outer corners. But it's really interesting. I really kind of amped it up to create a more 3D looking halo eye, which the halo eyes are 3D in the first place, but I really wanted to build dimension like you would see in a typical kind of third dimensional smoky eye look. I feel that can get a little lost in translation with halo eyes because it's sort of a new concept with makeup. And so I built those colors up to create just the very subtle soft blended effect so that anybody can kind of play in with a smoky eye. If you're like me where your outer portion of your eyelid is raised more than your inner portion, I think you'll really like this because it adds dimension to the look without enhancing how tiny the inner corner starts to become. If you're somebody also with close set eyes, you might also appreciate this because once again, the dimension built on the eye. Um, we're also using some iridescent and some shimmer and some shine colors that also brings a good nuance to the eye as well. Um, there's not a lot of structure. With the matte shades, I'm somebody who hates seeing a stripe through the crease. I'm somebody with a pretty um, built crease. Anyways, but if you are somebody who needs a crease, wants a crease, there is still a great deal of crease work involved. This is not one of those looks where it's all on the lid or all on the crease. It shines bright all the way up to the brow bone. This, this it will be all about the chocolate bonbons today. And hope you enjoy it. Okay everyone, so before we go into like the voiceover and the makeup tutorial and stuff, I'm going to really quickly come on here and talk about some skincare. And so the very first thing I took was the Wet n Wild Under Sheets for washing um, my face. These are gentle, very good for sensitive skin, um, pretty affordable for 25 sheets. Not the most affordable, but pretty affordable. So these are pretty good for cleansing your face in the morning if you have any um, residual makeup left over. Um, get it all done, get it all clean. For my toner, I took the Acure Organics Facial Toner. It looks like my, oh no, that's not, the bottle's not defaced. At first I thought the bottle looked a little, no, that's just the um, strange little sticker. But I've already used quite a bit of this, as you can see. It's a relatively small bottle, it's two fluid ounces, but for the cost, it's really good. Seven dollars for this little guy. Um, very refreshing, kind of a strong tea smell, but otherwise very um, refreshing. I love toners for this, especially in the summertime. I'll spray them multiple times a day. So that's why it's so far down. Now the next product I have been using is the Endly Naturals Fruit Stem Cell Science Do-It-Yourself Booster. This is an unscented anti-ager that happens to have an SPF of 30. You guys are not even playing. It's hotter than usual. I have been dealing with some clients that have extreme darkening, um, like extreme sun damage darkening of the skin. Scared me senseless. And so I have a little bit of um, this um, do-it-yourself booster SPF 30 facial serum unscented it's age defying it's supposed to restore dormant cells that are still good and it's supposed to um, replenish dormant cells that have gone bad so I don't know if it'll be a good texturizer for any of the darkening on my skin or the discoloration on my skin but if anything it's going to protect my skin from um, future damage so thumbs up for that I have been wanting this for a while. It is the Mad Hippie Eye Cream. Gosh, I have been wanting this for two years. I have purchased it for everyone else but myself. And I'm, I feel good about that. I feel so generous about that because I have really, I mean, I've had some weird obsession with this and ha haven't even tried it. But I know it's going to be a good eye cream because it has peptides, pomegranate, white tea as a good caffeinator. And my eyelids are starting to look so young. Like, I don't even know how to deal with it. I feel like I'm in my 20s again. This is this, oh my god, like, I look at my eyes in the mirror and I don't see the wrinkles anymore. So, I am down to be, I'm down, I'm down. So, these three things have been my three new products. And I am looking for a cruelty-free and vegan moisturizer. I'm looking for all of my basic pieces to be healthy, to be natural, to be vegan, and to be cruelty-free since our skin drinks these things. I mean, my skin is glowing when it wasn't glowing before. 
So to get started on the look, I'm taking the Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Concealer in the shade 0.5, and we're gonna be blending that out using my Beauty Blender Pro so we don't tug on the eyes. Best to use this somewhat damp, not entirely damp. And the Too Faced Chocolate Bon Bons Palette. First off, we're gonna be taking Divinity, which is a matte formulation, and we're gonna be blending this out using the e.l.f. Shadow C Brush, which is just a flat top sort of eraser style brush, as I like to call it. Next up, we're gonna be taking Almond Truffle and Cashew Chew as my transition. And given the fact that Cashew Chew is a satin finish, it's going to sort of do up this whole entire crease to begin with. And we're picking that up on the Sigma Angle Brush, blending that completely through the crease. Next up, we're gonna be taking a little bit of Mocha mixed with Almond Truffle, and this is gonna be an entirely matte just a deep outer corner. We're gonna be blending this through the socket and partway through the crease of the eye. So this will be just building extra dimension to the eye, just to play with textures. We're next gonna be taking Malted, which is a shimmering chocolate brown color, and it has gold flecks in it. This is a very malleable color. It doesn't really look shimmery when you pack it in as an outer V corner co color. So we're just gonna be doing less than greater than in the outer corner of the eye. This is up to you if you wanna do the darkest color as I'm doing. Depends on your eye shape and what you're comfortable with. Taking Satin Sheets, this is a very shimmery highlight color, very similar to the Too Faced Rosy Glow Highlighter. And we're gonna be putting that on the arch of the brow and the inner corner. Next, we're gonna be taking Black Current, which is a high intensity, almost metallic or titanium finish purple and putting that in the outer corner of the eye. Next, we're gonna be taking my favorite shade in the whole palette. Believe it or not, it is sprinkles, and it is a high shine, shimmering pink. Then we're gonna be taking a little bit of cotton candy and putting that in the very inner portion of the eye. If you have almond-shaped eyes like me, sometimes building in with lighter colors first will help it not look so harsh. Taking Totally Fetch, we're gonna place that over cotton candy and just build a nuance of like colors, colors in the same family. Since there is red and pink and red and purple, these flow in the same family. We're gonna be taking black current again, and in order to balance out the outer corner of the eye and make the whole work um, and ship kind of flow and look more halo and really just kind of transpire through the crease as a whole so it doesn't look cut off or unblended, black current will go in the deep inner corner. Taking It Cosmetics No Tug Eyeliner in Highlight. No tug is right, girl. We gotta stay young, fresh, and beautiful. And the less tugging, the better. Taking the Anastasia Beverly Hills Waterproof Cream Base in Jet, we're going to be applying this using an angled brush and to delicately apply that very finely over the top of the eyelid. Taking the e.l.f. primer in the Luminous Finish, it looks like a gold, and when we blend it out, it has quite a high shine in person. So if you have a foundation that has a high intensity luminous glow, you may be able to see this primer through that. If that's something that bothers you, I'd get the hydrating one from e.l.f., which comes in the blue bottle. Taking my Too Faced Born This Way foundation in the shade Porcelain, no fancy names here guys, and we're gonna be taking the Beauty Blender Pro again and blending that out in the areas that we have to cover for sure first. And that would be redness on the forehead, discoloration under the eyes, and, um, and then of course just eventually blending it down. That way we don't get a heavy mask of makeup redness on the cheeks, cover that up, and then of course to blend and blur that out. Once again, so the makeup doesn't look super heavy. Now we're gonna be taking the palette again, taking black current on the outer corner of the eye. We want this smoky eye to just sort of wrap around and be very organic as possible. Taking cotton candy, that's gonna go in the inner corner of the eye once again, so it has that unity that the upper lid has. Taking Kat Von D Locket Concealer in the shade Light Teen and just quickly covering up any sort of frayed edges from the shadow or any discoloration underneath the eyes. Taking the ELF HD Luminous Powder, we're gonna bake or set your choice. 
taking the Too Faced Waterproof Mascara, Better Than Sex. We're going to be lifting the lashes so they look very sultry and luxurious. And as always with my mascara application, I want my lashes to be able to speak for themselves with or without false lashes. Not that I take them off during the day, so not sure why I feel the need to go this extra mile. But now you can see how the look looks without the lashes. Let's pick a pair. 113s, say glam to me, sounds good. Let's go for it. I'm gonna be taking the lash glue. And it's really up to you what lash styles you'd like to choose these. I thought would be the most flattering. It could either be punky, funky, or spunky with this kind of fun halo purple eye, or you can go for the glam as I'm going for. So there's several ways to spin and take this look. And if you went for the spiky lashes, I hope you chose a dark purple lip, because man, that would have been fun. So just applying those, let that glue dry, and we're gonna reach into the Hourglass Ambient Lining Blush in the shade Radiant Magenta. Not only does this have the shade of magenta, it is warmed up by the beautiful diffused powder Radiant, and we're also gonna top off this look with the Becca Skin Perfector pressed in the shade Moonstone. I have no hate, no, no dislike for Champagne Glow in particular. It's just that I prefer a brighter highlight that says, here I am, looks glowy, looks healthy, and at the same time doesn't look glittery. And for me, that was Moonstone. Taking the It Cosmetics Naturally kind of pretty face palette. I don't know if they still make this, but this is a very natural tone bronzer. I think their bronzer that now comes in the little ombre compact is a very similar color to this. We're almost done with the makeup. You can see that the lash, the lash choice definitely makes a huge difference between glamorous and flirty and sort of out there and spunky. Lips, I'm gonna take we're gonna take two lip colors. So the first one is gonna be Anastasia Beverly Hills Crush, which is described as a beige, which I guess, okay, all right, it's kind of neutral. Beige it is. To me, this is like a muted, natural, very light kind of nudie lip color. It's one of those nudes that you can use for like bridal work because it doesn't have too much yellow or too much pink. It's a good, like, true nude. I'm digging the Anastasia Beverly Hills Lip Gloss in Sunset Strip since I'm back in California. Girl wanted her some Sunset Strip, and I love the doe foot on this, and it smells like vanilla sugar cookies. I'm just like obsessed because I haven't purchased a gloss in like over a year or two, and so I've been wearing this a lot. I definitely need to get more Anastasia Beverly Hills glosses. The price is right, under $20 for a high-end lip, lip gloss. I hate paying more than that for another gloss, but you know what? They smell so good, and they're very um, and they're very yummy, and they come in yummy colors. I just love the Reflex and Sunset Strip. I thought this was a more fun color than just going with clear, but it's definitely malleable. You can use it with a lot of lip colors. The Reflex in here is yummy. It flashes this beautiful Reflex in person, as you can see. So very fun. So I think the whole look is really fun and very delicious. And I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you don't like the cool beans. I had fun putting it on, and I think some of you guys will too. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching this one, and...